Hey, we're all set to go. It's about three or four degrees Celsius. Winds are just shy of 10 kilometers per hour. This is ice boating. Basically, it's getting on the ice and anything, uh, anything powered by wind that rides on skates, hopefully on top of the ice. You live in a cold climate. If in the wintertime you just go and hibernate in front of a wood stove or something, that's not very much fun. So people like Scott and Jim load into small boats outfitted with skating style blades and safety equipment like life jackets and ice picks. I put one in each hand if you're in the water. You jam them into the ice and you got a way to pull yourself up onto the ice. Otherwise it's very difficult to get up. Which brings us to a looming safety issue when solid ice becomes less solid. They say there's two kinds of ice boaters, those that have gone swimming and those who are gonna. Uh, me personally, yeah, I've gotten wet up to my, uh, up to my thighs before. We tend to preach ice safety, uh, never sail alone. You realize that there's always thin ice somewhere. Scott says this ice is nearly perfect. Even then, it's not always smooth sailing. You know, you'll be out in the middle of a lake and the, the wind will die. The boats will sort of gather together and stand around and talk about things. You'll also need some special gear like ice cleats and proper clothing so you don't freeze to death. And while boaters say you can get started for just a few hundred dollars, a boat with a fancy finish like Scott's can set you back a bit more. And you haven't put an automotive finish on it. And then they start rubbing it with hundred dollar bills and you tell them when to stop. Depending on your pocketbook, that may still beat spending an entire season by a wood stove. Hanging on for dear life in the very northeastern state of Maine, Arash Arabasadi, VOA News.